Hello, my name is Ryan Koval. I'm here to talk to you about uh, nonverbal and verbal communication. How do we interpret communication? Interpretation is an active, creative process we use to make sense of an experience. Rules that guide communication. Communication rules. Shared understanding of what communication means and what behaviors are appropriate in different situations. Regulative rules that re regulate interaction by specifying when, how, where, and whom to talk about certain things, such as what some cultures may find inappropriate, some may think it's opposite to that, such as in some cultures, uh, same sex holding hands of two males is appropriate in some cultures, other and others it's not. Constitutive rules. Rules that specify how certain communicative acts are to be counted, such as showing respect and rudeness towards each other. How punctuation affects the meanings. We punctuate communication to interpret the meaning. Communication is ambiguous. It can have one or more interpretations, such as saying, what's up to someone. In some cultures, what's up could be what's above you. Or in some, or in others, it can mean, how are you doing, or what have you been up to? Non-verbal non behaviors interact with verbal communication. For example, you might say, yes, and nodding at the same time. Nonverbal communication regulates interactions. Nonverbal cues tell us when someone else is finished talking. Establishes relationships, levels meanings. Nonverbal communication can be powerful and expressing relationships. Uh, reflects culture values, such as if you were to communicate with an autistic kid, you could use these tips from Community Practitioner 2017 from Laura Kerbey. Offer hand gestures such as clapping signs or note cards. Get on their level. It can make adults feel more friendly. Keep on talking to them and let them know what is going on, even though they may not be able to speak. They might have better receptive language than expressive language. I'm going to show you a quick video of some nonverbal communication. Okay, that's a little video of non-verbal non communication using hand gestures. There are ten types of non-verbal behaviors. Kinesics, face and body. A person who stands erect and appears confident announces self-assurance. Someone who slouches and shuffles may seem like they aren't sure of themselves. Peptics means touch. Babies who are massaged thrive more than babies who aren't. Physical appearance. We first notice obvious physical features such as sex, gender, skin, color, and size. Based on the physical features, we may make inf uh, inferences about others' personalities. Olfactus. Smell. For example, the smell of freshly baked cookies or bread may make us happy or hungry. Artifacts. Personal objects. Women often wear makeup, tight clothing, and carry purses, whereas men wear loose clothing and carry wallets. Roxemics, personal space. We stand about 400, 
4 to 12 feet from social acquaintances, 18 inches or less from friends or romantic partners. Environmental factors. We feel more relaxed in rooms with comfortable chairs than rooms with stiff formal furniture. Chronemics. Perception and use of time. How we perceive and use time. Some opposites may do not task it rather quickly, while another person may take their time. Pair language. Voice quality. Some communication that is vocal, but not actual words, murmurs, or gasps. Silence can communicate, I'm not speaking to you. So those are some, uh, those are ten types of verbal, uh, nonverbal behavior. Um, it's, it's important to know nonverbal behavior because first responders deal with people that may not be able to speak, but having certain gestures can indicate what is wrong. For example, a choking person may grasp a throat and begin to gasp for air. That is a good indicator that they need help. So it's important to know how to communicate with one another. We use different types of communication daily, and this can help your communication skills and how we, and how well, uh, communication with others. All right.